Hi, everybody. We need to be the ads for the video. Okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> So we are um, Reality Gaps and Agnes, and we are not the people uh, announced in the program because this is a bit improvised, so we're just trying to do the best, and it's going to be fun, I think. Okay. <laughs> and uh, we are from the Libre Hostess Network, which is a very, very young network, existing for three months now. Um, we can do this game. Uh, who is a hoster in here? Anybody? <laughs> who's a host who's not in the Libre Hostess Network yet? Okay, there's... Um, oh, yeah, but... Yeah. <laughs> okay, but we are not talking only to you, only if you, uh, we talk to you, but we talk also to people who know hosters, who have a hoster, or who might be a self-hoster, and to, to people who used hosted stuff. So I think it's everybody. Yeah, so um, basically the person who was going to give the talk didn't make it here in time, so... We haven't done this before, we're going to try and run through it and hopefully it goes okay. Um, Libra Hosters is a network of Libra hosting providers, basically, on the basic sense. And uh, the various hosters involved have different models, different implementations. There's some cooperatives, there's some activist groups, some non-profits, some uh, people making some money from it in, uh, in an ethical way as such, if that's possible. Um, and it's about free software in the end, which is why we're here. If it's possible. It is possible. <laughs> you, <laughs> you have to want it. Um, yeah, it's about free software. Well, that's why here at Fostum also. We, we try to be 100% um, free software, even if you would say maybe there's some firmware and blah, blah, blah. But try to make it 100%. That's the idea. You want to say something? Well, it's, it's mostly that the software that you host needs to be free software. If you're hosting non-free software, we're not really so interested in having you in the network as such. I'm sure there's other places where that's great, but here it doesn't really fit. Um, although servers don't always have uh, fully free software, and that's understandable. Network switches as well, there's issues. But the software that you're providing your users should be free software. Um, and, and there's amazing free software nowadays uh, all over the place, but most users can't really find a way to use it because they don't have the technical skills. So the idea is here that you have service providers that can provide instances of the software that people can use so they can grow to know the software to promote it and maybe to host it eventually themselves as well. Stay with barriers for users. <laughs> I think um, a lot of um, hosters are hosters because they want to give access to, uh, to ethical services to people. And uh, we all know there's a lot of barriers for users. So if you tell your best friend, stop using Gmail, go to a cool hoster, the person will ask, where should I go? That's the first barrier. So that's uh, something we have to get better in, to, um, to make it very easy to find well, already why should I change Gmail and then where to go. That should be very, very easy. But the first barrier we have to take care of. And we're busy with that. So um, when we made the network, we tried to figure out what brings the people together and how we decide kind of if something belongs or doesn't belong or things like that. And often you have um, rules, and we thought that values was a better way to define this than rules, um, so that we could find that we share values rather than you're not following the rules, you're following the rules and, and having long conversations about rules. So we ended up with a list of values um, that we shared, and we hope that the other groups that join it will share them. They're not all so well defined yet. And we're having discussions to try to find the values better, and we're very up for people helping us to define these values well. But it's to give an idea of the sorts of shared values in the network. Um, and so we'll just go through those a little bit uh, first. But, oh, yeah, you're already there. I wanted to say uh, uh, values, not rules. We are also not an organization. We are just... Uh, people or, or um, projects that uh, create this network together. So we, we are not creating laws, rules. We just uh, have the same goals together, and uh, we are not willing to share new associations with, uh, with a legal entity, and uh, I think we can do it without it. Cooperation fits... Well, um, the first value is cooperation because the main thing we want to do is to cooperate together, um, sharing knowledge and helping each other and not reinventing the wheel every five minutes again in another group. Um, so that, that was a really strong value that was very easy to extract from uh, the, the ideas that we shared. 
and uh, solidarity, because sometimes you're just sitting there by yourself and everything's broken and you don't know how it works. Um, and you need help, and there's someone out there who's probably done it before, and they might have solidarity with you and sit there with you in the evening, giving you a nudge and, and giving you some tips. And also solidarity with your users and their struggles and the, the day to day that the average person is going through if they try and free themselves somewhat and the struggle that they have. Uh, and some groups are also activist groups, so they have solidarity with the, the activists in the regions that they're using them and uh, the, the users they're providing services for. What's the next? Uh, we said that already, but uh, you can always repeat that as often as needed. We love free software and we want free ho Libre hosters to use and promote free software. And yeah, decentralization is uh, something that's becoming more of a buzzword nowadays, and it can mean all sorts of different things, but the idea is that we don't want one big hoster that's doing free software for millions of people. You want a network of decentralized hosters where people can possibly migrate between them, where they can choose one that fits what they're looking for in a hoster, which isn't necessarily what you or someone else might be looking for. Um, and so diversity is, is, is good for that, but decentralization was the key word rather than diversity in, in that. And as we are also friends with um, self-hosters, uh, some peer-to-peer -peer within the decentralized network is welcome. Federation is also um, decentralization federation, how to work together if everybody is on a different server, that's uh, the future, I think. But also there's a big push for federated software, uh, activity pub, um, matrix type stuff, uh, XMPP, uh, anything that can federate so people can talk from one server to another, that seems to be the stepping stone towards the peer-to-peer -to -peer world that we probably visualize further down the road. But the steps now um, involve A, giving people the, the tools they need to be able to free themselves up a little bit, and um, B, starting federated um, services so you can move around easily. But those, that comes up more in the, the coming values, I think. Uh, yeah, and distributed platforms and federation kind of go together. So um, I think those are, yeah, you can have something like, say, Macedon or Pleroma or something that's distributed over many, many hosts and federates. And in that way, um, the platform isn't centralized as such. But um, yeah, it's, it's a very overlapping term with the other one, I guess. Do you have something more to say on distributed platforms? No, it could have been one slide nearly, but uh, well. Transparency, who doesn't agree with that? So to be very clear how your service works, uh, your, also your project, the whole association, to be uh, um, transparent with your uh, fellow networkers, but uh, of course with your users and uh, with the one that might become your users later. Something else for transparency? Um. But it seems so obvious that uh, I'm embarrassed to say more about it. Seems obvious too, but... Uh. Well, it's a difficult one because fairness can also mean all sorts of things. But the idea was that we would treat each other fairly and treat the users fairly and try and make it a, a fair system and not completely imbalanced. Where as a user, you don't have any sort of say because you don't know how to use technical software or something. Um, it should be fair for everyone who's uh, approaching it and balanced in that way, I think. Yeah, privacy is a, a really important thing nowadays, but privacy also can mean all sorts of different things. The idea is that um, Libre hosts, um, or groups inside Libre hosts would not share your data with other parties, and they're not going to data mine your data, they're not going to make money from it, and they're going to keep it as private as they can, and uh, also provide you with an uh, understanding of how private it is or isn't. I think that's one of the most important things about privacy, is understanding how private something actually is, rather than, yeah, it's private, or no, it's not, there's, there's a whole spectrum there, and actually understanding where you are on that spectrum and what you can do to improve your privacy is maybe the important thing uh, there. Um, I just wanted to say privacy might be uh, one of the first motors why we are hosters and want to be Libre hosters because uh, we, we want to build uh, the internet we want to have and uh, the society we want to have and uh, g giving the huge space to privacy and the right to privacy is uh, one of the biggest motivations. Data portability is uh, you don't want you to have your users as uh, prisoners. So if a user of yours or a client doesn't like you anymore for a reason or like someone better, uh, their data is theirs. So they can get it without any hassle and go somewhere else. No lock-in. 
And it, it goes a bit further than that even because the groups in the network agree to help you move from one to the other. So both sides of the chain where you want to move from and where you want to move to have already pre-agreed that they will help you with this as much as they can. And also if you want to leave the network, they'll also help you to export whatever you can. So yeah, there's uh, no lock-in. I just had another idea about solidarity because it can always happen that um, one actor of the network disappears because of any reason. And uh, so the others should be solidar with the users also. The, so if a user disappears, the network should be dense enough that take, is, there's care, taking care of the users. Yep. And actually, we talked about this yesterday a bit because we noticed some of the services only have one admin. And the bus factor is very high there. And what we're trying to do is to encourage these um, lone admins to maybe buddy up with another lone admin so that they'll have a backup if something goes wrong. And uh, also to ask for help from us in, in figuring out how to get more admins on board, perhaps, so that they have a backup and they're not also the only one taking the stress of the project, because this can get very stressful sometimes as your user numbers grow. And it's nice if you have someone else to pick up the energy when your energy is low or to, to answer the users when you can't, when you're ill. Um, so that's super important, too. Uh, yeah, and uh, public contributions to the commons, which overlaps heavily with free software. But the idea is that what gets built in this network gets shared with everyone because stuff should be shared with everyone. No, that's clear. So, uh, yeah, what we actually have now is a directory of hosters um, there's a, that's on, on the website. Um, and you can add yourself to this list by adding a JSON file. Um, so basically the idea is that everyone adds a JSON file. It's a bit like the Hackerspaces API, Space API. It's the same sort of system where everyone has a, a JSON file on their um, host that reveals the, the data about their hosting provider. This is a very early version of the example that we had. But um, you can see there's a contact URL, a privacy policy, terms of service. So then we can make an index of them and we have easy links to all of these things. We're planning to add um, more location stuff, more information on the number of admins, um, possibly more information on the, the values that that provider has that differentiate them, perhaps. Um, but that's a work in progress at the moment. And basically, if you add this to your website, then you add yourself to the directory, and then we make a directory listing from that. Yeah, maybe to, to give this a more bigger frame, uh, it's about where we are at this moment. As I said before, we, are, we exist only for three months. So uh, at the moment, we are on, only talking to Libre hosts to join. This is uh, the way at the moment how to join. This list is also a um, work in progress. I think there's some uh, points missing. Um, but later on, when we have uh, all this uh, directory of Libre hosters uh, a bit big, bigger, uh, we, we will address to users that can find the hoster the, the, with the perfect match through these um, informations they get on, on the directory. And the idea is to have this um, as a JSON-LD schema, but uh, some people are way more into that than others, and we haven't found the time to get it done properly. But that should happen over the next few weeks. We'll be expanding it with uh, locations from JSON-LD schemas and stuff like that. And uh, actually... The directory itself looks kind of like this at the moment. Uh, and there's a, a couple more joining every week at the moment, I guess. I think we'll have some more joining today. We have some merge requests waiting, uh, which we were going to do live on stage. But since the speaker didn't turn up, we had to get the presentation working. You to uh, are, you, are you merging it now? <laughs> OK, so Distroot is now being merged into LibreHosters, which means <laughs> which we'll take a look at just after we finish the slides. Um, because it should automatically appear on the website a minute later. Um, so we'll see if it actually works, which is very unlikely, probably. Um, <laughs> we just put it up like five minutes before the talk. So, um, yeah, and we have a, a number of ongoing discussions. One thing to make clear is that this is very similar to the idea of Chatons, which is a French network that does very similar things. We had discussions with them over time about whether to join that network, and it seemed uh, from both sides that the best thing to do was to make a, a more English language international network. But there's a huge overlap with chatons, and we think most chatons would also be able to be Libre hosters and vice versa, and we're in contact with them about this, just because that will probably come up in the questions. Um, mm. The ongoing discussions now is how to, how to do governance. Uh, is governance a good word for, for governance? Um, Self-governance, essentially, and um, how we onboard people and how we... Um, um, get people out if it's not working out, like how we convince them that they should really leave because they're not a good fit. I mean, we don't want to be... Uh, yeah, be yeah. And, and the idea is if, if someone can't join, we don't say you can't join, we say you can't join yet. If you change this and this, then, then sure you would fit here a lot better and to try and make it uh, easy for people to join and uh, hard for, for us to lose them if they're a valuable part of the network. 
So ideas welcome if you have uh, already an idea how to call gov governance and if you have really good ways how to build governance for a very young network, just let us know. And of course join us and or tell your hoster to join us or um, let people know who should join us. And so we'll, probably, we'll probably be at the CCC camp with an assembly as well, a village. Um, so come join us with your hosting group or just come by for a drink and a discussion. And we're around the next couple of days and at Hackerspace Brussels party this evening. So if anyone's there, come find us, chat with us. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Or join us here and find all the information. It's a very tiny uh, web page at the moment, but I think the, everything is there, everything that exists in and you need to know. So you can reach us very easily. Uh, that's it, I think, yeah? I think so. <laughs> yeah. Let's see if uh, we have a new member. Yeah. Uh, yeah, this is the website. <coughs> Only one little page. Ah, we're still nine. Did not work yet. Did not work, but, well. Yeah. Okay, but maybe you go there later in the day and we will be 10. Questions? I'll try yeah, to... I think we can already go to questions. Um, maybe we didn't fill our, all our time, but it was um, improvised. Well. Okay. Yeah, we can do questions now because... Uh, Yeah, that's true. It's, uh, oh yeah, so it was not clear what, what we mean by hosters, if we mean, mean uh, hosting machines or hosting services. Um, and of course, yeah, it was missing information. <laughs> but it's uh, about uh, providing services. Um, not only, okay, it's can, yeah. Well, well so we can discuss it. <laughs> um, every group does different things. So some groups are only dividing, defining like user services like Nextcloud, um, Matrix, things like that. Some groups will allow you to run your own instance on a, on a VM. Um, uh, our, our instance that we host, for example, gives VPNs to users at home so they can run their own servers at home on a fixed IP address. Lots of our users run Wayuna host or something at home through our association. So it can go everywhere from the user kind of using a service level to running a VM. Um, we have some projects now looking towards Kubernetes with uh, instant auto rollout stuff. So you can say, I need an xCloud and I want it in Germany and uh, click, click, click. And then your next cloud comes out, gives you a list of the providers you can choose from and the differences between them. So hopefully in the next year that comes across more. Uh, Libra SH and some other projects also are working on that together with us. So I think it can be a wide range of uh, yeah. stuff. And if you come with a new sort of service and you think it fits, then it can be that too. Yeah, no, you're right. I didn't hear it. So the, the question was whether we plan to list which services are provided by different hosters in the, in the list. We do. Um, that has partly to do with doing it properly with JSON-LD. <laughs> and if anyone can help with that, that would be great too. Um, but the reason it's lacking is because the, the first version we tried to just get out so people could use it. We plan to have the, um, yeah, the services that you're running, um, the values of your service, um, the number of admins, and, and some other points in there as well. It's just going to take some time. Schema.org. We want to try use a standard ontology so that it can be read by everything without having our own format. But it's going to take a little bit of time to get it good, I think. The questions. Oh, yeah, you uh, did the questions in the, in the mic. It was more of a comment than a question. <laughs> okay, that was more of a comment than a question, but he was saying that schema LD is what we're trying to uh, adhere to, and that's yeah, what we try to adhere to. So I have a question, that, an actual problem I have with Libra hosters, and uh, I'm a hoster too, and that's what I stumble on. Migration of my data from one hoster to the other is uh, 
wishful thinking most of the time, and it's super difficult. How, do you address that? Do you have ideas for that? We're, we're trying to address that with some. Oh, yeah, sorry. <laughs> The question was that uh, migrating between data providers is very difficult and sort of mythical and doesn't really work in the way that anyone would say or expect it to work. So <clears throat> some software supports this a bit, which makes it a bit easier. Migrating VMs is also a bit easier. Um, if you're on a VPN service, you can just jump. So it very much depends on the service, but I think a lot of work is needed to make sure that you can migrate well between things. And from what I understand, you were working on projects to do that. No, he's dreaming of. Ah, dreaming of projects to do that. So we should dream together afterwards. Because maybe we can figure out how to get a bit closer to it. But make, maybe making things better like this, this is a big uh, problem to uh, work on together maybe. And uh, the LibreHosts network is also to uh, find working groups, to find uh, um, peers who, who want to work on the same issue and uh, raise um, um, bar a working group and make things better. So maybe this uh, is something to work on together. <laughs> no more questions. Uh, maybe I have a question. Uh, if I, for example, use a service from a hoster and I want to support the hoster, uh, is it something that we also cover or is it like defined by every hoster or...? Um, so the question is if, uh, if someone wants uh, not doesn't look for a hoster but wants to support a hoster. Is the LibreHoster network uh, covering this? Uh, at the moment, no. We are much too young for that. I don't know if we want to do that in the future or if it's more the hoster, the, the different hosters who should uh, take care of that. Something to discuss. Uh, if you think that's uh, something important, maybe you could tell us why and we will talk more about it. Um, but uh, actually something we completely forgot in the presentation is uh, to have a local hoster, to have someone close by you. And uh, if uh, well, we want to promote that people have a hoster in their city or every city should have at least one Libre hoster or better a bunch. So I guess if that would be the case in the future, you would know personally the hoster to support and find a way how to do it best. I think the, the idea is that we don't do anything for the hosters in regard of, of fundraising. We'll point you towards their website. But there could be some point at which we'll have some um, Patreon type thing for all the hosters that we could host. There's some free software I found the other day that does that. And we're sort of considering that at early stages, but it's unlikely at this point. I don't know that anyone's providing full physical servers yet. Some of us are hosting on bare metal, and some people provide VMs on bare metal. Oh, sorry. The question was, um, do we have anyone who's providing with uh, bare metal full servers, basically, uh, as part of the network? I don't think that's the case at the moment. It would be possible in the future. Um, some people provide um, services on bare metal, but they won't actually give you access directly to the dedicated uh, servers yet. But if anyone wants to offer that, that would be useful too. But I think that's not, well, it's, the network is uh, the place where you should discuss this, but I, there, there are Libre hosters that uh, deal with this issue and uh, try to solve it. So time's up, but uh, yeah. Thank you very much.